Okay, this video is, Can Immune System Function Be Improved? So here's an extraordinary painting. It's called Lost by August Friedrich Schenk from 1873. So go ahead, take a look at that, see what you think of it. We're gonna come back to this painting in just a moment here in this, later in this talk. Okay, here's another painting by, uh, it's called, this one's called Anguish, by, again by uh, August Friedrich Schenk. This one's from 1878. So it's extraordinary the emotion he can convey uh, as you know, in a painting of sheep, okay? All right, so now, why is it a big deal to have good immune system function? And I'll show you right here. So this paper is called Quantitation of Cell Shedding in Mammary Breast Cancer, all right? So here's what's extraordinary about this paper. Tumors that were just one gram, these are a tiny tumor, one gram in size, routinely shed into the blood over 3 million cells per day. <laughs> That's incredible. So what that means is someone who has breast cancer, now this was done in rats, okay, in rodents, but there's tremendous similarity between rodents and humans, and it's reasonable to assume that there's some overlap in these numbers. So anyways, the point was that even a small tumor is shedding over a million cancer cells into the blood every day. So where do you think those cells go? They have to be removed by the immune system. Otherwise, you know, they would be growing metastatic tumors all over the place, all right? So what's the point? You have to have a good immune system, okay? <laughs> you gotta be removing all these cells every day. And the immune system in general works extraordinarily well. Okay, so here's some encouraging news. This is patients giving a phytochemical, basically means plant foods uh, or plant products. And these showed in tissue culture an incredible ability to kill breast cancer cells, okay? Now this, cell, this study does have a little bias. You know, one of the authors has a patent to try to get his combination of plant chemicals for treatment of breast cancer, and another one's trying to make it into a supplement. That's fine, but still the point is they were able to show this incredible ability to remove breast cancer cells from tissue culture while simultaneously not inducing, uh, they said, no del deleterious effects in the control cells. So in the normal cells were not affected by it. So that's rather incredible. Okay, here's a paper about follow-up of breast cancer patients, and what they found was a surprisingly high number of breast cancers spontaneously regressed, got better on their own. These are patients who had no treatment. So what's the point? Their immune system must have removed those cancers. All right, so what I'm trying to say is your immune system is really important. It protects you from cancer and infection and whatnot, and living in a healthy way helps you to have a healthy immune system that functions well, and that could be the difference between being healthy and enjoying life or, you know, having cancer. So here's a paper showing, you know, so we just talked about plant foods doing a lot of good things. Here's a paper where polyunsaturated fats, especially omega-6s, were given to um, rats with uh, breast cancer tumors, and they show that the tumors grew faster when they were given omega-6 fats. So that's the reason why you, you don't want vegetable oils. There's, vegetable oils are really bad for cancer. Okay, so how can immune system be improved? We've talked about it plenty of times, low fat, low sodium, vegan diet with fruits and vegetables. That's where you get all your antioxidants. It also keeps you thin. Fatter people get more cancer. They die faster with cancer. Um, organic foods are better, less herbicides and pesticides. Filter your water to get estrogenic and carcinogenic stuff out of there. Avoid meat and oils. Meat's like the worst tumor promoter. That and omega-6 oils. Uh, meat's terrible for multiple reasons. The white blood cells of your immune system, they don't function well when you've got a high fat diet and your blood is all thick with fat, or low formation, blood sludge and all that. Um, excess dietary sodium has a harmful effect on the immune system. Processed food in general is very high in sodium, so those are good reasons to avoid all that stuff. No alcohol, forget about all these stupid uh, recommendations about alcohol in moderation. No, no alcohol, none, don't drink it, okay? And if you wanna drink it, then you're making a mistake. That's my opinion, all right? No tobacco, not one puff. None of this cutting down or I'm trying. You know, quit. Don't be a wuss. Don't be an idiot. Okay, Mayo Clinic says iron is a key nutrient. Okay, now that makes me laugh. Like I said, you know, they got these 
Boston, big, fancy, famous medical centers recommending Mediterranean diet. Totally stupid. And there's this one Mayo Clinic site saying, oh, iron is a key micronutrient. When they're talking about immune system function, how stupid is that? Iron is what you want to sequester and keep away from infections. They make infections grow faster. Cancer needs iron to grow. Our body sequesters iron to help prevent infections. So, yeah, like I said, don't go to one of these big university uh, health newsletter sites. <laughs> they tell you the stupidest stuff. Okay. Um, they hide behind their titles. They don't know anything. All right, exercise really improves immune system function because when you contract your muscles, you contract your lymphatic vessels. Parallel to your normal venous vessels for your venous blood are lymphatic vessels that remove that help lymphatic fluid to travel around your body. Well, your white blood cells travel through that and they use their travel time to remove cancer cells, okay? They, the lymphatic system connects the lymph node system to the blood vessels. So you really want that functioning well. You get 10 to 30 times more lymphatic flow when you're exercising. Um, and then another thing too is I've noticed a lot of these people who've made the great survivals of metastatic cancer were people who exercised a lot. And two of the most famous ones, Ruth Heidrich, PhD, and she wrote a lot of stuff about uh, surviving to breast cancer. She's got videos online. Um, Janet Murray Wakelin, she also runs marathons, survived metastatic breast cancer. And they started running these marathons um, they were running marathons then after they got breast cancer and they both made incredible recoveries. They both are, you know, vegans. She initially, Ruth Hydras did the McDougal diet and Dr. McDougal helped her. Um, then she's kind of switched to eating a raw uh, vegan diet. Janet Murray Wakelin eats primarily a raw vegan diet. Um, I think there's a lot of healthy stuff in these, you know, obviously fruits and vegetables, but fruits are better than I think was previously recognized has been my impression. Get your sleep. Your body heals a lot during sleep. Get your sunshine. It maintains optimal uh, vitamin D3. It's a D3 that's the good one. The, the D2 is the one that's measured in blood tests. It's not the same thing as, as the D3. The D3 is what actually really does most of the, the good things. Avoid unnecessary stress. I gave a lecture on that recently. Does stress increase risk of cancer worsening? Yes, it does. Um, it weakens the immune system. Caffeine. Because, man, stress is being chased by a tiger in the dark. That's the metaphor to remember everything. And you don't care about your immune system when you're just trying to survive being chased by a tiger in the dark. So avoid unnecessary stress. Um, get your sleep. Sleep deprivation is perceived as stress. Avoid caffeine. Caffeine just mimics acute stress response. Increases cortisol. Increases catecholamines. They're both uh, bad for your health on a chronic basis. Um, try to have positive relationships with people to the extent you can. Avoid the negative people to the extent you can. Let go of resentments. They usually don't get you anywhere. Yeah, some people are rude, did something nasty to you in the past, but just get over it. Be nice. Try to be friends and at least avoid them. Have an attitude of gratitude. The serenity prayer is is a good one, you know. Remember that one, you know. Appreciate what you got. Don't bother with things you can't change. Laughter is really good for the immune system. There's plenty of that's been written and shown about uh, laughter improves immune system function, makes you more resilient. Um, so that's a good thing. It's good to have at least one friend you can joke around with, or preferably be more, but to have at least one. <clears throat> um, people with a sense of humor, they age better. All these blue zone centenarians of Dan Butner National Geographic. They tended to have a good sense of humor and good easygoing personalities. That's characteristic of people who live and are healthy after 100 years of age. Uh, religion makes people a lot healthier. The classic book on that is Healing Power of Faith by Harold Koenig, MD. He did a lot of study of that. Uh, prayer can make a lot of people happier, more resilient. Religious music. For example, I love Christian music. Um, religious community gives people more resources. They can enjoy each other's company and they can help each other. Now, I know some people like meditation. In the modern world, it's considered uncool to talk about Christianity. It's considered cool and okay to talk about meditation because it's really non-denominational. It's not really, there's no even God in that, okay? And, you know, my feeling about that is that's what Ashoka was this king, ruler, dictator. When he conquered India, he said, okay, I'm converting to Buddhism. Everybody meditate. And it really is kind of a way to tell people, you know, be quiet and don't bother me, all right? So anyways, if a person likes that and it makes them happy, fine. Uh, but it's not my thing. If I want to pray, I'll pray to a god. I'm not going to talk to myself sitting down. Um, lots of great men were energized by religion. Uh, Bach, Isaac Newton, Mozart, Goethe, Faraday, Dostoevsky, Victor Hugo, Charles Dickens, C.S. Lewis, Chesterton, James Tour. And I saw my mother, it totally energized her. It made her so happy. The older I got, the more I appreciated 
wow, it just sort of was a tremendously positive, incredibly uh, enhancing phase of my mother's life. I learned a lot from that. My dad was religious but quiet about it and he didn't do much. My mom was, it was like a big part of her life and it really helped her. I think that's partly why she survived her cancer so long. Uh, like I said, I'm the one who screwed up because I didn't know all this nutrition and pathophysiology at the time of her cancer many, many years ago. Like 30 years ago, she was over that. She was diagnosed. Okay, uh, the man who was happy. Okay, now a couple quotes from Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky was in concentration camp in Russia in the 1800s for, for years with only a Bible to sustain him, and he became very religious. You know, a similar story with Alexander Solzhenitsyn. So anyways, here's Dostoevsky, some quotes from him. The man who is happy is he who is fulfilling his purpose. Yeah, a person's happier when they have a sense of purpose in their life and they and they do their best to fulfill that. And, you know, James Watson, the DNA structure discovering biologist, said something similar. He said, um, you know, I think an animal is happy when it does what it's supposed to do. A horse is happy when it runs. Okay, so each human has to figure out what's sort of the meaning and the purpose of their life and if they feel they live true to that, they tend to be happier. So Dostoevsky continues. The mystery of human life goes beyond staying alive. It seeks something to live for. We are all responsible for everyone, and I am more responsible than anyone else. Even those who renounce Christianity and criticize it, in their innermost being, they still try to follow the Christian ideal. No one has been able to create a higher ideal of man and virtue than the ideal given by Christ. There is nothing more beautiful, more profound, more sympathetic, more reasonable, more courageous, and more perfect than Christ. And there not only isn't, but I tell myself with a jealous love, there cannot be. If you were to destroy in mankind the belief in immortality, not only love, but every living force maintaining the life of the world would at once be dried up. Moreover, moreover everything would be immoral, nothing would be unlawful, even cannibalism. If someone proved to me that Christ is outside the truth, then I should prefer to remain with Christ than with the truth. If they drive God from the earth, we shall shelter him underground. Fyodor Dostoevsky, uh, who lived from 1821 to 1881. Okay, this is just a picture from this article by Wang, 2022, about stress and cancer from Frontiers in Immunology. And basically what he's showing is the stress response activates these two major pathways the hypothalamic pituitary axis to go to the adrenal glands and ramp up cortisol and epinephrine, and also the sympathetic autonomic nervous system, SANS. And both of them have the net effect of suppressing the immune system, amongst other things. And they also can favor progression of cancer. We talked about this in other lectures, but I'm just making the point. Inability to control your psychological stress weakens you as a person, and it weakens your ability to prevent uh, cancer and infection. So it's good to get your personal philosophy straight because uh, that will help you to be more resilient. Okay, so now let's take a look at this painting. And what does it mean? The sheep are lost. The shepherd's trying to rally them together. The dogs will do what they can to protect them. But basically, if they don't help each other, they're screwed, okay? There's a pack of wolves coming, and the pack of wolves is just going to pick them off and tear them up on their own. But if they stick together, families, communities help each other. They work together to help each other. Everybody's better off. And I think that's dramatically shown in this painting. Okay, now also having a sense of purpose. Now this comes from Viktor Frankl. He lived from 1905 to 1997. He, he was a survivor of a concentration camp and he was a psychiatrist and he wrote a really good book about how does a person make themselves more resilient. So here's a quote from Viktor Frankl in that book. The gas chambers were ultimately prepared in the lecture halls of nihilistic scientists and philosophers. Oh yeah, by the way, watch out for people who push too much Darwinism on you. They don't even know what they're talking about and who claim science figures out everything. In my experience, usually, in my experience, quite often they have this atheistic, you know, imperialistic, you know, English communistic view of life that basically whatever they say is right because they're superior and other people are meaningless and... What I'm trying to say is that type of mentality that claims science can do everything without God or religion usually leads to bad, evil, cruel behavior. And so don't be too impressed by it because it's fake. It, it does almost nothing useful. 
All right, um, so let's continue with uh, Viktor Frankl here. The quest for meaning is the key to mental health. Meaning is strength. When a person has a solid sense of who they are and what they're trying to accomplish in this world, they become more resilient. Our survival may depend on seeking meaning and finding it. If we can find some meaning to put at the center of our lives, even the worst suffering becomes bearable. Once an individual's search for meaning is successful, it not only renders him happy, but it also gives him the capability to cope with suffering. You don't create your sense of meaning, you detect it. Life is not primarily a quest for pleasure as Freud believed, or a quest for power as Alfred Adler taught and as Nietzsche did, but it is a quest for meaning. The greatest task for any person is to find meaning in his own life. The salvation of man is through love and in love. Love is the ultimate highest goal that a man can aspire to. Man is ready and willing to shoulder any suffering as soon and as long as he sees a meaning in it. The more one forgets himself by giving to a cause or to serve another person to love, the more human he is and the more he actualizes himself. Self-actualization is only possible as a side effect of self-transcendence. Okay, so that's a pretty good quote. Basically, if you have a meaning and a purpose in your life, become a lot resilient, a lot stronger, you get more endurance, you're able to handle more difficulties and suffering, and you know, some difficulty and suffering is inevitable in anyone's life. So getting your personal philosophy correct makes you a lot stronger. It's really worth doing. Okay, Stoicism has some benefits. I kind of liked a few Stoicism quotes like a Marcus Aurelius. Here was like my favorite one. A man should be like a cliff, and all day long the waves break against his feet, but the cliff is not moved. And the way that works is all day long you're going to have to deal with all kinds of silliness, nonsense, and stupidity, and you just do what you have to do to do a good job and be nice, get through the day, but don't take it personally. It's like I learned that as a doctor, following around this really good emergency room doctor, he would never be emotionally affected by the patients, despite them having some really serious, acute problems. And, you know, he told me basically he has to stay objective and cool in order to be able to go from one room to the next and be able to do a good job. If he was emotionally affected, he wouldn't be as able to help the next patient he had to go to. And the guy was a great doctor. I was real impressed by him. Okay, so anyways, next uh, quote here. here. Okay, here's secularism and atheistic Darwinism, which is the prevailing cultural... Uh, mantra of our current day. Basically it says humans are nothing but talking primates. Imagine if a person thinks like this way. This is what they're taught in our schools, um, in our colleges, okay, in our society. That a person, a citizen, could basically say to themselves accurately based on our society, I'm just a talking primate, a farm animal really, who is owned by the ruler, life has no meaning, I might as well get drunk or stoned, okay? And so Ayn Rand had talked about this a lot, that if a person has no sense of purpose or meaning in their life, then they want to do things like go to Woodstock and get stoned and act like an idiot. Okay, But if a person has purpose and meaning in their life, they don't want that kind of behavior. They don't want that from their life. So here's a biblical worldview. Man is created in the image of God. Therefore, man can be a creator. God loves me. My life has meaning. God wants me to help people. Therefore, I shall try to find a way to help people that is also interesting to me. Okay, That worldview is more likely to lead to achievement and a good life that helps other people than this worldview. Okay, and uh, here's a quote from Arthur Schopenhauer, which I love, because this is doable by anybody, and it's very much like Christianity. He basically says, The best source of happiness comes from who the man is. A happy life is impossible. The highest a man can hope to achieve is a heroic life. Arthur Schopenhauer, he lived from 1788 to 1860. Okay, so... What's good about, you know, people say religion is stupid. Believe me, if you look at science, there is more nonsense and lying in so-called science than you would believe. If you pick up a textbook of medicine, pathophysiology, biochemistry, evolutionary biology, and you really know a lot about these things like I do, you will find nonstop lying. Nonstop. It's, it's unbelievable, okay? Whereas, you know, Christianity, every religion has its problems, its ups and downs. That's true. That's fine. But... What does a religion do that's not um, a part of so-called science? It answers the metaphysical questions. Why am I on earth? What is my purpose in life? Why, are you, why do humans exist? And what are we supposed to do while we have this life on this planet? Those are important questions to figure out for yourself. Okay, and I'll, I'll just give you, you know, a typical example for what it's worth from my life. You know, My son, he said to me one time, he sees me around the house just reading and working on a book or something. He says, Dad, why are you so happy? 
Your life sucks. All you do is work and study. And I said to him, I'm happy because I know who I am and what I am. You're sad because you haven't figured out that out yet. So basically for him to sit around studying <clears throat> and reading and writing all day would be miserable, <laughs> miserable, painful torture, okay? But for me, I enjoy that, you know, because I sort of see it as my purpose. And, you know, you can laugh at me, you can call me arrogant, but I sort of see myself as almost like this combination of Aristotle and Aquinas, Thomas Aquinas, St. Thomas Aquinas, and Aquinas said, here it is in his vision before Christ, that is his job to try to learn as much as he could and share it with people and try to help people. And I know that totally energizes me. And, and so that works for me. So everybody has to find what works for them. Uh, but I know what a great thing it is. I saw how my mother, you know, my mother had this incredible energetic life. She was so far beyond herself. And I know that her religion did that for her. Okay, some other thoughts here. We're almost finished up. This is the last slide. Um, Self-improvement uh, makes a person happier. So it's nice to feel one's improving a, a little bit each day. Helping other people makes us happier. I think it just releases reward neurotransmitters. Humans do much better when they work with other humans in social groups. So I think our brain releases reward neurotransmitters when we help another person. It's as if it says, okay, you're more likely to stay intact in your social network. So therefore, I'm going to give you more life hormones or something. But it's just true. People who help others, they become happier themselves, more resilient themselves, healthier themselves. Okay, um, and you know, when you have a clear set of metaphysical values and you live by them, you're happier. You, you know, you're, you're, you're at peace with yourself. Um, so, you know, it's like the quote here from the Bible, 2 Timothy uh, 4, 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith.